The Perimeter is brought to you in partnership with Speak Studios. Speak Studios. Speak and be heard. The Perimeter with Adam Morrison is brought to you by our official title sponsor, Mercedes-Benz of Spokane. Experience the best or nothing at Mercedes-Benz of Spokane with Dan Crowley and his exceptional team. They're located in beautiful Liberty Lake and his local family-owned dealership under Guy Automotive. Their staff prides itself on a personable and memorable experience from service to sales and will have you leaving the dealership feeling satisfied with a smile on your face all the way down the road. Back-to-back winners of the Best of the Best Civil Laurel Award. Receive invoice pricing on any new Mercedes-Benz in stock when you come in and mention the Perimeter Podcast. You can check out all their available inventory at SpokaneMercedes.com as well as stay up to date on all things Mercedes-Benz via their Facebook and Instagram pages. Call them at 509-455-9100 to schedule your Mercedes test drive today. Welcome to the Perimeter Podcast. I'm your host, Adam Morrison. I got the 2017 AP Coach of the Year, two-time National Association, Association of Basketball Coaches, Coach of the Year, two-time Naismith Coach of the Year, 14-time WCC Coach of the Year, future Hall of Famer Mark Few. Thanks for coming on, buddy. You got it, Mo. It's an honor to be on this. Yeah, you're so podcast, excited. You know, I had to beat you over podcast. the head. I had to beat you over the head to come on, but I appreciate uh, you making time. Uh, how busy are you right now after the season? That's why you were beating me over the head to come on. Exactly. This is probably the. It's the new normal. Right now in college basketball, April is the, just a chaotic circus. Mm-hmm. Every day, literally sometimes every hour, uh, uh, things are changing. And uh, I, I've said it for the last couple of years, like if we just get through April and the first part of May and then <laughs> things yeah. kind of even out and you kind of know who your team is and what you're doing. But it's, you know, but, hey, it's chaos in in – a good way in a lot of uh, facets uh, with just, you know, we talked off air about our guys moving into their next phase of their career with the NBA. So you're handling a lot of, a, a lot of calls mm-hmm. along those lines. Uh, but then you're also just handling, uh, you know, just with this new uh, the portal. transfer portal, there's, incredible amount of disinformation out there <laughs> right now, a very, a horrible disconnect. The NCAA has just done a really, really poor job uh, uh, with getting information out in a timely manner of if you're going to be eligible and if you're not going to mm-hmm. be eligible. Um, so that's, and I'm, you know, as you know, I'm on a lot of these committee now. And so I'm trying to kind of play both sides play a little b- bit. Will help and just get the, you know, some of these people to get up to, up to speed on these things mm-hmm. and then also trying and that coaches are reaching out to me and ask me, you know, what I've heard and where we're at and all that. So, uh, uh, it's interesting times and all the while, you know, you just, at the end of the day, like I tell everybody, look, I mean, I'm in charge of this, this program and it's the number one priority. Mm-hmm. Um, and, it's just it's 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 an interesting time and and I and the other thing I always say is this time of year is like, you know, now it's been two weeks or whatever three weeks, but I mean you know it used to be like hey three days ago all of us put our hands together and said, you know, for a game family together, yeah. you know, team, and literally when you get done with that last game in April. I'm just to, and and I'm a thousand percent for for this. Please don't uh, misinterpret this. Mm-hmm. But you got assistant coaches going looking here for jobs. Yeah. You got players looking at the NBA. You got guys wanting to transfer, and you and you look around and you're like, okay, there's three of us, me and <laughs> me and B Mike and True Timmy and Andrew Nemhart trying to keep this thing together. And it's, and and again, yeah, I'm ten thousand percent for it and and want everybody to go but it's it, it is a different thing you go from this i mean we were together on a on a hotel floor for 24 straight days yeah. as a, just a big family and then man when that final buzzer, final buzzer goes off it's everybody for themselves and you're trying to just keep the gonzaga uh you know unit together so, so are you are you are you a fan of the portal or are you kind of like uh 
both sides. I mean, because you see the value. The value mm-hmm. for Gonzaga with the grad transfers has been great over the sure. years. So, like, all in all, I mean, I know you got to kind of toe the line a, bit, a little bit with the NCA, like you mentioned. No, I don't have to toe. No, I don't have to toe it at all. So, do you like the portal? Well, I think that that I mean, do you like f- food? <laughs> I mean, that's just <laughs> such a basic. Like, do you like the transfer portal? Do you think it's good for college basketball? Well, there's the, this portal or whatever is just not you know we've been moving along on this continuum for a time yeah. like so if you're asking me where the rule currently stands with all this misinformation and and uh, disconnection of facts to where we're going to be yeah. no it's a disaster right now uh i am for players having opportunities i think if the ncaa would have been more astute uh, and more timely on seeing this coming down the pipes, just like NIL, we could have avoided all of this by just if a coach gets fired or a coach leaves, Mm -hmm. you get a free, you can, you can, you can go. I agree with that. You can go. Yes. Um, But, you know, just open it up under the guise of like, well, all the other sports can do that. You and I both know the other sports are not like, uh, men's college basketball yeah. and football. Yeah. Okay. It, it, there's a roster building aspect of this with incredible, um, highly, highly competitive recruiting Absolutely. things going on that are vastly different than these other sports. Swimming and, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. this idea or, and, and so I think we could have avoided all of that by just, getting behind this, you know, four or five years ago. Cause sure. I mean, if you, you know, went to a place and, and, and the coach left, I took another job where he got fired. I mean, and, you know, you, I, I, it's definitely within reason. You should be able to do that. I know? think so too. And then what happened Mo is, you know, everybody, they started allowing waivers mm-hmm. and then you could just get a waiver for anything. And you started bringing people in and my, you know, my aunt's, cousin's nephew's brother is really sick and I need to go home, go home. Yeah. Yeah, well, if you're going to go home, why don't you sit out the year and spend some time with that mm-hmm. aunt's cousin's nephew's brother, you know, <laughs> not, <point>. not <laughs> play college basketball and never go home. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, you know, there was that and, and, and whatever. And, you know, I, I, I you're involved in AAU basketball now I am. Uh, with your daughters and, yeah. and uh, so that I mean, there is a generational aspect of this, um, where you pretty much can just if you hit the slightest bit of adversity, you just go. You're, you're go, you're out of there. Yeah, and I personally don't think that's a healthy way to uh, mature. And and you know, you, there there are some things you got to learn, life lessons as you journey through this life, especially at your young, younger age. I totally agree. I think. Uh, you know, speaking of the AU stuff, I mean, my daughter's team just forming it was chaos. You know what I'm saying? And teams leaving, and you know, obviously, it's not a tied to a university, but to be able to have to deal with that, and then trying to roll players, and then you mentioned the recruiting process, especially with you guys now, because you guys recruit different players than you know my era, and that's not a knock on the players I had, but or, or we had. Um, but they're I, higher can level I stop guys. That for a second, though, like I think. First of all, like, I mean, come on, you were the second pick in the draft or whatever, you mm-hmm. know? So I, I, I bristle at that a little bit, you know? And J.P. Batista was an unbelievable double-double machine. And Derek Ravio was, come on now, all of you guys would play big-time roles, starter, all-league, all-American, currently on this team. So, um, I yeah, I, I, it's, uh, you know. And, and again, I think I got the best feel out of everybody in this. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I, I welcome other opinions, but I'm like, I'm just saying. I, okay, right. if we're going to go that route, I was on the court with these guys. Right. Okay. And obviously I watched the last four years covering the games. Sure. There's better top to bottom players at Gonzaga now than there was our era. That's top, not even close. Top to bottom. Not even close. Right. But the okay. top, especially when we had – a guy like you, yeah, I and, we, and we had 
and even and Batista was, you know, and JP was nineteen and ten, and you yeah. never get, we never yeah. threw him the wall, right? Yeah. I mean, well, you didn't, I but, didn't, <laughs> um, uh, but uh, yeah, you know. So I, again, I just you know, and and people like, well, okay, well, Casey Calvary be great for us right now. We yeah. got to use Casey Calvary the other night against Baylor. It's true. You know? um, so you know, I agree, top to bottom, but we, you know. Yeah, but when, what when I'm talking Dom I, Harris and, and Julian Strother, you know, that are. That's what I'm saying, like yeah, SP, yeah. ESPN top hundreds and stuff like that. That's yeah. what I'm basing it off of. Now, we, we have, okay. we had great players, but those, that stuff matters in today's basketball. You know that, right? Or recruiting mm-hmm. for you guys, it does a little bit. It matters to the kids that are considering going to Gonzaga a little bit, right? Like, who have you gotten in the past is on my level, right? I'm sure that question has come up in your recruiting, right? Uh, I mean, it, okay, but first of all, so ESPN 100, okay, where the hell was Adam Morrison on the ESPN 100? Exactly. The, the dude, well, it was, it, because you're putting too much stock in these dudes who are it's doing not stock. ESPN. It's social. It, it's how the it's how you can view players now. It's so much easier. Back uh, then, I I, 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 I view I you to, as the, one of the all time greatest guys ever at Gonzaga. I appreciate and that. What actually one of the all time. Greatest college seasons, you can yeah. argue that any players ever had, and so you, there's a fine line. And and I pride, I still pride ourselves at Gonzaga is, if I see you and I see this dude who they say is a top fifty, but I know mm-hmm. what works at Gonzaga, <laughs> and I have full confidence mm-hmm. in my ability or or my staff's ability to say no, 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 we're going to take. Adam over this guy and you know let's see where it is a year from now two years from now three years from now yeah I mean you obviously have parameters of what it means to be a zag that's I I totally agree with that and and you've done a good job of recruiting those type of guys that buy in you know I've talked about it on the previous shows how how much Jalen bought in this year as a one and done guy it was fucking incredible he's off the charts it was it was it was so uh, coachable. Unbelievable. So, do you know, like, the last time uh, we, this is the, uh, we're done, right? I mean, uh, the, getting off the, the charter uh, on the bus, and, you know, we had to make the freshmen uh, shag the bags or whatever. Yeah. You know, he's out there shagging the bags, yeah. you know, just yeah. come on. <laughs> I mean, yeah. he, it's, it's over. He's uh, going to be the third pick in the draft yeah. or whatever, and he's shagging bags and just he was – if you came to our practices and watched him, you'd think he was a walk-on trying to make the team, you know, with awesome. just how so good. what a great teammate he was, how hard he went. In fact, I told him, like uh, – Stop uh, diving on the floor so not, much, you know. I actually like, told him, uh, you know, in the NCAA tournament, as you kind of as a coach, you know, okay, this thing, I got three more practices with <laughs> Jalen. I got two more, and I just told him, like, Jalen – just do me this one favor, man. Who, whatever coach you play for next, or whatever coach you play, coaches you play for, just practice. Give them the greatest gift ever. Just practice as hard as you practiced here, man. Oh, That's wow. the That's greatest awesome. gift you could give. You know, a mm-hmm. future coach, man. It's such a joy to have a dude. You never worry about effort. Well, he just seemed like he was such a positive kid as well. And then I thought you guys did a good job this year of. of letting him be a kid, if that makes sense. And then you pulled the reins back on, you know, sometimes you get a little bit out of control, but he had so much pent up energy. Yeah. Um, but just watching him, man, I was like, man, this kid is so different. It was so sad that there was not an opportunity for the fans to watch him yeah. live. Obviously yeah. we know that the COVID stuff, but you know, I was sitting there like, man, this kid is so fucking good. Yeah. Like he's so good. He's so polished. Who does he remind you of? See, that's where I've, I've gotten, it's hard for me to go with the comps because I've heard one Jason Kidd with a better jump shot. It's like, okay, I played against Kidd, actually. He actually locked me down one time. I had 22 in New Jersey going into the fourth, and I had zero in the fourth. He handcuffed me, yeah. Anyway, um, I I, I remember I said to you this year, Bradley Beal, but the more I thought about it, it just doesn't make sense. He's not as big. Bradley's a high, high, high level scorer. Not that Jalen can't get to there. I mean, you obviously coach them. I, I can't come up with a comp. What do you think? I, I mean, the comps for me are some sort of this combination of Jason Kidd and the Jet Kid. And I, and I watched Jason Kidd in college. And, and again, J, J, Jalen's a phenomenal passer. Phenomenal. Willing passer. Willing passer. Uh, creative passer. So, uh, and what it reminded me with uh, 
Jason Kidd was just the north south. I mean, Jason mm-hmm. Kidd would just be coming at you just full bear over and over and over again, the relentlessness yeah. of it. Um, kind of a Chauncey Billups uh, uh, body and kind of like Chauncey in the uh, uh, half court. And then I, I just think he he reminds me of Russ, man, with just his uh, the joy that he plays with and the explosiveness and the, the energy. He just keeps coming and coming and coming and, and just – some kind of combination of those guys, a lot of the goods and a lot of the bads, but um, just ferocious competitor, man, mm-hmm. and 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 channeled his his channels his competitive spirit pretty darn good for somebody so young, uh, and he, he's just going to be fun to watch as he moves. Yeah, through. I think I think great it, person, great family. That's great, that's what I've always heard. Is handle the family's perfect. this stuff amazingly well, so coachable. For someone that's had all these accolades and everything, willing to be coached, wanting to be coached. I know that's a new concept for you and a tough concept. Uh, uh, I was your easiest player to ever fucking coach in your life. I. (laughs) Well, actually, we can save that for later, but. It was good. It wasn't that bad for me, but you were not easy on assistant coaches. You no, were not. I, uh, <laughs> we had. You some were a guy skin. the head coach had. To, you needed to be coached by the head coach and not the uh, assistant. Yeah, I was hard <laughs> on uh, Tommy, Billy. Yeah. Uh, Leon was my guy, Leon so I, guy. I let Leon yeah. slide a little bit. But yeah, Billy and Tommy got the yeah. brunt of it. Uh, but yeah, just we, th- uh, uh, you know, I, we touched on that earlier. Just kind of the whatever, entitlement or whatever we think that's going on with this generation mm-hmm. and the ability to hit adversity and, and get, you know, leave, give up. Um, none of that with uh, Jalen. Yeah. None of it. Like zero. So, yeah, just amazing job raising him as dad, coached him, and uh, his mom's mom is is very huge part of uh, – his growing up and his maturity and all that, and just uh, just a joy for the whole. You know, it was a two and a half year recruiting process, and then the mm-hmm. time he was here was perfect. Yeah, no, I I, I think he's kind of moved into the special Gonzaga players, but only being here a year. You know right. what I mean? Which is is kind of hard to do because everybody kind of has their their guys, their eras, um, their teams, and I think Jalen kind of moved into that. Uh, with one year, obviously the shot against UCLA put him at the, uh, you know, Mount Rushmore stuff as far as uh, Zags moments. But uh, did a great job with. Uh, he opened himself up to be mentored by Corey and Joel. I that's mean, cool. really, really opened himself up. Smart enough to do that, you know. Yeah. And and they did a phenomenal job with him, uh, you know, because here you got a guy that you know is theoretically going to be picked before them and whatever and has yeah. all this. But yet, you know, he wasn't on their level when he got to our place. Mm-hmm. I mean, the first couple of weeks where he was not, I think people were, whoa, he's not quite ready like what they're saying. And then, but yeah. yet he started figuring it out. And yeah. the talent kind of started coming through. So, you know, some of this is a, uh, talking about Jalen and then kind of the superstar. It's kind of a good segue to the next topic. For you as a coach, what was – I mean, obviously you talked about we're deeper now than we used to be, but th- the more successful teams earlier on were kind of star-driven. Myself, Dan, Roni would be in that category, Kelly. Now it's – everything was spread out. When did that When did that philosophy come in, or did it just happen by, by chance with recruiting? Because, like I said, we used to be – Dan would get a lot of shots, I get a lot of shots – throw it to Roni all the time. Kelly would get most of the looks. Yeah, I'd say, I'd say Kelly's wasn't so much like that. I think Kelly's was where we, you know, you may have Kevin Pangos and Gary Bell and uh, Elias Harris alongside. Uh, oh, uh, yeah, Elias's Kelly. years were his freshman year, but anyway. Yeah, I mean, but again, I uh, I think interestingly enough, we Kelly and Kevin started really driving the, the team building aspect yeah. that we've really uh, um, kind of seized upon. Uh, and, you know, as you know, we have Travis Knight that he's strength and conditioning part of the time, but he's just an incredible uh, motivator and team builder, yeah. motivator. Um, 
We used to do that stuff in LA. I think it's fantastic. We yeah. used to do uh, a team psychiatrist at the start yeah. of the playoffs, and yeah. he would come in for a week, and all the coaches would leave. It had nothing to do with it. It was yeah. great. It was yeah. fantastic. You could say what you wanted. Uh, grievances would get aired, but there wasn't really <clears throat> much. But then you, you've everybody focused their goals as a team, and it was uh, right out in front. It was great. Anyway. Yeah. No, but that that's it's what important. we do from the jump. We yeah, do it great. from when they get here in August, and we do it the exact same way. Coaches aren't involved. It's mm-hmm. it's Trav, and they have a different uh, theme or you know whatever weekly that they focus on and and come up with. And he, now he's uh, partnering with Brett Ledbetter, who's like a nationally uh, renowned uh, for you know, working with everybody from. Urban Meyer to, to Bob Stoops to mm-hmm. you know Billy Donovan to myself and and a lot of uh, great programs and and uh, teams and coaches and and uh, uh, so it uh, early on with your group you know I was probably naive and ignorant or even back before yours to I think we probably spent you know we just assumed team chemistry would happen at yeah. Gonzaga. It it was good, but it was good. But yeah. you sometimes you have to facilitate it. Yeah, it helps. Yes, and and, and uh, building confidence and yeah. and you know if there's any role struggles or like grievances or anything like that or just assimilation of you know what we're trying to do offensively, defensively, and now I mean I would guess it. I mean I'm, we're probably up to spending 25%, 30% of our time on it. You know, I view that just as important. Like I would, there's times where I'd say, well, you know what, we're probably, we don't need to practice today. Why don't they just have a, we call a PGM personal growth Monday with Trav and those guys. I think they probably need that best, you know, or, or a guy like Corey and Joel would come to me and say, Hey, you know what, we need to, (laughs) <laughs> to do something like that. When when the fuck did you start like changing all of this? Because when we were playing with you, it was personal growth. My ass, like get your ass in practice. Okay, so yeah. when when did you like? Was it TK helped you with hey, that Travis Knight, hey, or did you I, again? I'd, I'd say Kevin Pangos was just like, hey, we need to start doing. Well, that's cool. You know, yeah. we need to do an outing. We need to do. We need to start the season with an outing. We need to come together. Mm-hmm. We need to not, you know, just assume it's going to happen. Kelly was totally on board uh, with that. But Kevin, I don't know, I think he came across it somewhere, I don't know, it's Canada basketball or something, just came up with the idea. And, and uh, from that, and then, you know, boy, that team was uh, uh, terrific. Yeah. Uh, Kelly's year. And then, you know, those Pango Spell years were pretty special. I mean, it got all the way uh, to that he, Elite Eight game. He, yes. And, uh, um, and people kind of forget about that team. Yeah. Like, yep. yes. With Wilch. Yes. Uh, Domus was a freshman. Um, so, yeah, and then it just, I think, you know, just like uh, you have to adapt and grow. And and it, the mental part of this is just so huge now. It's it's something you, you – it needs to be addressed and, and on every level. It's not just repping out, you know, in the gym or not yeah. just watching film and executing and, you know – those are still very, very important, but the mental part of it is has become as important, at least in my opinion. Did when you started with USA Basketball, did that help kind of the philosophy change too with the program being around? You know, you've been around Bayheim, Shashevsky, all those guys are you know bef- before you joined there, they were on a higher tier. Now you've surpassed them or or with them, right? Uh, I mean. I- uh, You're not going to say you don't have to say that, no, but I'm just I'm you don't have to clarify. Close to what those guys. Are well, about. you know, what I'm okay, but you get what I'm saying. <laughs> um, You're always humble, and you never like the accolade yeah. stuff. And but, do you think going to that and being around how they handle, how do I say this? Uh, the higher level recruits, the dudes, the one and dones. Did that help change the philosophy a little bit at Gonzaga compared to what the teams were prior? You know, uh, like Kelly and stuff. My group, Dan's group. I, was, I, I would say the, probably the biggest impact that USA basketball has had on me was, uh, and was, ironically, I was just on the phone with him uh, today. We haven't caught up since he switched to, to Marquette, but it was myself, Shaka Smart, and Billy Donovan, mm. and we were together uh, in this little podunk town in the middle of Brazil, like nine hours from uh, Rio. I mean, it was uh, 
and it was much like what we uh, just got done in the bubble. I mean, we were all had our own room. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, it, I mean, it was a fun team. We had Marcus Smart and uh, a bunch of different guys. Actually, Montrez Sorrell was like our eleventh man or whatever. Yeah, now he's, he's <laughs> ended up yeah. pretty good. Yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, so just kind of being around those guys and and uh, I think that really started. There was a couple of things that helped us evolve this mental aspect of it. I think it's huge in the evolution of our program that got me thinking we got to change defensively or, you know, we got to get much better being around Chaka and Mm -hmm. and Billy and all that. Billy's teams were, you know, at that time, I I want to say that was right around when they were final fours and and the back-to-back national championship was right in kind of that wheelhouse in there. Um, And so we got, a lot better defensively after that, after just just not not just X and home, but just being around uh, uh, those guys. And I think we started really focusing more and more on that. Uh, yeah, because you guys switch it. everything now, and that's kind of, I think, how basketball is going. Like, our team's never had that ability. We never even talked about that. I mean, yeah. it, obviously there was more back-to-the-basket players on the floor um, in my era, uh, but – Watching you guys, I would say it on the air all the time, like one of the reasons they're so good defensively is because everybody doesn't get any uh, action off of their high ball screen stuff. They switch everything, and there's no tag. There's no closeout late. So I'm Mm -hmm. like, and a lot of these teams that are not as dynamic, they can't run anything. They can't counter it. Um, So, yeah, like I think that switch defensively obviously took the program to another level, but the level of athlete has helped you guys be able to do that though too. I mean, yeah, shit. no question. Especially our our bigs, I think, have become much more uh, versatile. Yeah, you yeah. know, and able to uh, you know to, the luxury of being able to do that, and and then you know, I mean, I trust in your guys more, and, and understanding that that's a it's a good area of growth for them. You know, uh, they move on. Yeah, next their level, careers for sure. so. Uh, that's been big. And then the other thing that uh, last piece, I think, of our growth has been the analytical piece. Just I'm not a big analytics guy, but when John Jacobs yeah, came Jacobs, into our program, I was just gonna say that. he got us really focusing on efficiency. Mm-hmm. And that's the he really swung me over to that thing. And and to the point where we're we're drilling it. And so our guys are aware of it in practice, you know, like we'll do, okay, 10 possessions. And if you're not above, you know, 1.2, then yeah. you lose. Mm-hmm. And uh, same with defense. If you're not at point eight, then you lose. And so then I think that gets them, you know, there's so many things before it was all about shooting percentage, right? You yeah. know, like, hey, you got to hold them under 40, you know, you got to hold them under. Well, if you hold them under 40 and foul the, heck out of them they shoot 20 free throws doesn't like, matter doesn't really matter right or you hold them under 40 but they make three threes mm-hmm. in a effective 10 field. possession yeah, deal. yeah effective field goal percentage yeah. yep so getting the guys to understand that you know especially threes and 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 and, and fouls and and also you can turn guys over right and and this year's team we had this year we, we, we turned people over yeah you know you our defensive were, numbers were Maybe our field goal percentage defense wasn't great, but we were able to really turn teams uh, over a lot. And so the the DER, I mean, at one point was you know we were top five yeah. in the country going into the into the tournament, and but you know we started leaking oil those last two games, and that mm-hmm. was a big uh, you know that was kind of our downfall. Well, you guys, I think we were number one or number two with field goal percentage at the rim. My memory serves, and then field goal percentage in transition, or the percentage of shots in transition, and that has direct link to your defense. So, yeah, I think one of the biggest growths for me, just playing there, and then obviously covering the games, is I always tell people because you guys are always so good offensively. Obviously, um, I'm always like that they're way better defense than they get credit for. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. they can switch everything, they mix it up. Uh, I remember that BYU game. You guys did three different ball screen coverages on the top. It was just yep. wild. It was, yep. it was just wild to even think. Yep. Dribble, weave, dribble, weave, dribble, weave. Yep. Different coverage on every single in in one play. You know, as a, as an opposing coach and as players, like, well, what, what do we do? You yep. know what I mean? So, but that that speaks to you know 
what you guys teach and and, and uh, but the guys we have too, right? So I'm mean, saying there's only certain that can do it exactly type players, teams that can kind of do that, and that goes back to that mental piece. Sometimes you gotta some of these guys they have to you gotta talk them through that. Just the willingness to okay, this isn't just gonna be we're just you know there's still there are some still some teams I'm sure there's still some in the NBA that just do one. This is what we do. This yeah. is who we are. This is. But I think we try to challenge our guys mentally to like, no, look, you need to be able to show, show center field, switch, go under, yeah, yeah, everything, and and um, can we do it multiple, like you just said, uh, uh, multiple times in one possession, yeah, based on personnel, based on location, based on any of that stuff, uh, and again, you know, that that that's what helps when you have veterans like Joel and and uh, Corey out there kind of mentoring the guys, but. That to me is what bodes so well for Jalen moving forward, also because I mean there was, I mean Mo, any you know how me and me we put in crazy, we put in a different set or two every week, you know, or sometimes every game, and he picked up on that stuff so quickly, and and same with our ball screen coverage, you know, Mm -hmm. all the coverages he was. So I think that well in that game he was the top of the. Because usually when you guys play dribble weave, you put your best defender on the top, and so it just negates everything. And he was on the top of that. And I remember going having beers with you and Tommy after the game, and Tommy's like, Mo, did you see what, the, what we're doing? And I kind of thought, it was, yeah. And you were like, that's a freshman doing that. You know what I mean? And it was just like, yeah, it's crazy to even think that, um, you know, because 15 years ago, I don't think you would give a trust to a freshman – as a coach, right? I mean, let's just be honest. I mean, if he could do all that, I would. Well, <laughs> quite shit. frankly, it, yeah. like, I mean, it's just hey, you know, I mean, it. We Blake Step start, you know, started as a freshman. I mean, because he was so the smart. Goal, the the former that. golden child of Coach Fuse coaching career. Uh, he was Blake pretty Stepp. good, Mo. Do you I know? played with the guy. I, yeah. He was one of my favorite teammates of all time. Yeah. But he yeah. was the golden child. I was my freshman year. as a senior year. Blake could do no wrong in the eyes of Coach Few. Just got to say that. Huh. Do you agree with that sentiment? Uh, I, uh <laughs> probably because he probably did didn't do many wrongs. So it's usually an earned thing. It's not something that's a perception. Uh, so good point, Touche. Uh, so let's, let's let's segue into my years, right? Um, what you do you have remember? To refresh my memory. I'm got, I know, I which know, is I, it, it's funny. It's a lot of years and say I know oh, it's no. it, it. It really is funny to to go back and I'm like shit. It was 15 years ago, and you know when I talk to some of the former players now, I'm like they were like five and six when I was playing. They probably I'm just the radio guy, you know. <laughs> and so like it's <laughs> funny. That's crazy. Um, yeah, like what do you remember most about that that 06 year? Just how crazy? Because I've explained it to people, but sometimes materialize it better, explain it better. Just how, like, the media and the fans. Oh, I mean, just unbelievable, the fan following. Mm -hmm. And, like, you mentioned earlier, like, I mean, it would have been so great to – I think this year might have been able to rival that. We really haven't had anything even close to that. Even the year when we went to the national championship Mm -hmm. didn't have the – and, again, that that was because of the the entity that was – you and and was Mo and and the national mm-hmm. um, well notoriety how they cover, and, yeah and how they coverage college basketball yeah, is different now yeah, too yeah. yep and uh, uh, I mean uh, it was just amazing on the road I mean and, it was and, wild uh, it was just ridiculous checking into hotels and all that it was just stuff that we'd never had to deal with ever before and I, I don't really know quite frankly how many college teams who would have had to have dealt with that uh, yeah before I mean it, it would be like. And again, I just you got to watch what I say here, but it was be like one, probably one one hundredth or one what Jordan and the Bulls dealt with on a regular basis. Yeah. You know, like people knew where we were, people knew where we were staying, they were following our bus. We yeah, had to jumping on the we, bus. We had to be crafty Diego. with shielding you from that. We had to shield my number yeah. in the hotel and. And different exits and stuff, and uh, I call it the John Stockton rule, where you just avoid people at all costs. He <laughs> taught me that to uh, go down the stairs. I still do that now, and and uh, um, but yeah, it was it was crazy, and it was just uh, I, I'll always just remember the electricity in the opposing gyms. 
That's what. Well, that's what I. Just I, off the charts. I, I. I have to agree. Yeah. It's like what. What compared to, you know, because we'll go to some West Coast Conference game. You guys browbeat the, the hell out of that league for everybody knows for, twenty years or whatever. So like, they're a little bit, you know, kind of on the like, oh, we can't. It's gonna be hard to beat Gonzaga. But like when we went to the opposing gyms, it was wild in there, and it was like, standing room only. You know, and like the electricity, like you said, and because um, we were fresher, and I think the league was more competitive just because you guys, it was our time. We weren't as established then. We were still good, obviously. Um, but, yeah, I just remember, you know, the amount of media we had to do and this telling the same stories over and over again, and God bless OP, but just having to do, like, you know, you'd go from Sports Illustrated then, like, the Ritzville times would, and he'd give them yeah, the same, the, yeah, <laughs> the yeah. same amount of yeah. exposure. And yeah. you just be like, OP man, I love you, but just yeah. get, get me out of here. But, well, I would just say this. We, I think now we still, obviously we sell out everywhere we go, but yeah. Um, it's the energies, the energy are, yeah. is different. And I would just add this little nugget here. The reason why the energy is different is you had this, uh, it's not an endearing one when you're coaching the team, but this this ability to uh, uh, to keep everybody's attention with drama because uh, our games were <laughs> always <laughs> much more competitive yeah. back then. As it, we were probably usually behind at half. And yeah. Well, we were always <laughs> up ten, so then at the end of the game, I can get fouled and get like yeah. six more points. Yeah. yeah. We never yeah. blew anybody out. Yes. Or we, yeah. So. Yes. 15 yes. points was a blow up to us, and now it's, you guys, you know, win yeah. by 30. And, and it would always be a little bit tighter, a little closer. Yeah. And uh, then there was even the theory on the coaching staff that I'd say, no way would anybody do that, that when we'd send somebody to the table to check in for you and you'd be at the free throw line that you would purposely miss the second uh, free throw. All the time. <laughs> And Every time I, I would just again, I'm the guy who thinks the good in people, and I would look at time. Leon and Billy or Leon and Tom. Like, there's no way he'd do that. Oh yeah, no, 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 he's totally doing that. Yeah, missed yeah. the second one, so I stay in. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, how naive was well, that? Well, I remember, <laughs> you know, my one of my favorite stories from that year, um, and Kyle Bank had told it, and I said it on the my jersey. Uh, you know, when you guys, or I was lucky enough to get my jersey thing deal done at uh, GU is. So we play Idaho that year, and I have a shitty game. I go, like, you know, probably 4, 14 or something like 4, 13, 12 points, 14 points. And Kyle's told me the story that you came in with the coaches. You guys always meet in a separate locker room and said, I have no ability to score. I lost my ability to score. That was your direct quote. Like, yeah. <laughs> and I'm then, not saying I say rational things after a game, okay? <laughs> we won. We won the game. We won. We beat Idaho at home, but you were so you were so upset that you you said I have no ability to score. I lost all my ability to score, and then the next was year that, was I blaming myself for that? Maybe I was blaming myself. Uh, you said, were throwing me under the bus yeah. after one bad game to start the season, and then we go to Maui and and you know I have a good good tournament. And so, okay, okay. So in your mind, I threw you under the bus, but then I I'm quite sure I started you in Maui and probably let you take 20 shots that game and probably <laughs> ignored the fact you, that you weren't exactly trying as hard as other people on the defensive end in Maui. And so yeah, this is, this is something that I always kind of underestimate how good the old ball coach took care of <laughs> oh. you. Maybe you were the golden child. <laughs> okay. With just the guy, the assistants could not turn a blind eye to some of your things. And I was like, you know what? When the lights come on on game night, he competes his ass off. And I know he's going to, he's a ferocious competitor. And I know he's going to get buckets and he's going to put us in position to win. I don't care that he's yelling at you guys, <laughs> yelling at the walk ons in practice. The guy, so, yeah, I'm. So, well, you know, you're going to hit 50 in a while, Mo, and you're going to look back, and, you know, that dude took good care of me. Hey, I've never, I've never. Because you're just getting the assistant's take on this over all the years. Yeah. So you never got the old ball coach's take on this. Well, I mean, <laughs> I feel like, you know, I you and I butted heads a little bit, but there was always a myth around town that you and I, like, never got along, and I never understood that. You know what I mean? No, either. Like but, I said, but is just, there a better get along and letting the guy take thirty shots a game <laughs> and pull up from half court? I mean, 
I, and again, that's just my theory with guys. Like, hey, if a head coach is letting you do that, you know, just because he's not hugging and kissing you after the game, you got a pretty good relationship. Yeah, <laughs> I always and I've always I've always had to. You know, people have asked me that, and I've always kind of shake my head, like, you know, look with the look of like, what a dumbass question you just yeah. asked me. Um, I, I used to bristle at this, Mo. It would drive me nuts, and it still drives me nuts. The announcers back in the day would question maybe because we weren't a good defensive team, but they would question like our, our toughness and your toughness a little bit, I thought. And I used to like getting pretty sustained arguments with them off air about, do you guys understand how mentally tough you have to be to go out and get 30 a night (laughs) when they're out to, when everybody is watching you and how mentally freaking tough you have to be to make big shots at the end of the yeah. game. Like, look, I know like the guy slapping the floor in a stance who can't shoot outside of four feet is giving <laughs> great effort, but there's no mental, you know, I mean, the, the, the mental toughness and con- I mean, if, if that was the case, there'd be a lot more guys that could go out and get 30 and yeah. it's a very, very special club that can go do that in college or the NBA. Mm-hmm. And so uh, again, that, that used to just drive me nuts. Cause I think you were one of the most mentally tough guys we've ever had in the deal that the load you carried that year and the pressure that was mountain with the you and JJ thing, the pre, you know, mm-hmm. and all the stuff as we got, you know, you know, all these seasons are like that. The deeper you get, the more theoretically pressure that mounts. And you delivered time and time and time again. So yeah, I, I just, yeah, that, that all, the, yeah, the toughness deal, because, you know. It is, it is mentally, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, the, it is, it yeah. is draining when you, and, and this is not a knock on our team. It was obviously, we were 29 and four that year, but. I knew I had to get 25 plus for us to be successful that year, every single night, you know, with, with, Defenses keying towards you, guys face guarding you, yeah. fouling the crap out of you, and yeah. stuff like that. So, you know that 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 stuff does get uh, it, it gets hard. And then and then if you have, let's say you have an efficient game, but you get nineteen. Oh my god, what happened tonight? Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? You're just like, you got a coach walking eight. into the locker room and saying you can't <laughs> lost your I I lost I, your ability. I don't even know if that's true. So Kyle Bankhead, just, former Gonzaga player, said it. Well, One of my teammates go. said so it. And must be true. It's I. I mean, I believe it. And uh, you know, I mean, it was oh, that was a fun year. Though my, you know, obviously my whole career was fun. I mean, you gave me one really good chew out after my freshman year. Remember we played stand that good Stanford team we lost in the Bay. Yeah, Remember they, that really good Stanford team that went undefeated? Super physical, right? And took us kind of – Yeah, they, yeah. They, they just beat the, pot, the yeah. piss out of us. Yeah. And so we get beat by like 25. I have 20 off the bench feeling great about myself freshman. That, that, that was year, your freshman year? Yeah. yeah. So I'm playing – I think that year I played 19 minutes a game, averaged 11, but it was X factor. So like if I played good, you left me in. If I wasn't playing good, I'd still get my normal minutes, but you'd just sub out. And right when we get off the bus, you were like, practice right now because you were so pissed so like we had we flew home this is when we used to fly commercial so we fly home we were doing the the three-man weave or your uh uh what's it called what's the drill olympic drill but on both courts sideways in the kennel so you're just trying to run us basically then you called me to half court and basically called me like the biggest you know what not tough person ever in, in the history of Gonzaga basketball, and I had tears in my eyes. It was a tough one, but uh, do you remember that moment? Uh, I'm sorry. Should it's it, I, it scarred me for life. <laughs> <laughs> it also motivated you. To, it did. To it did. Yeah, hire yeah. Better things. So, uh, yeah. I mean, I I think that's probably you know you could we could say that's part of my strength and part of my weakness. I don't wait around to like. Yeah, I'll, I'll meet with the guy in the morning or whatever. I just try to hit things head on. Yeah, no, we on, we know? earned it as a team. I mean, we and played terrible that game. We played I just, soft. You know. Um, yeah. But you're not alone. I've had a lot of those conversations with a lot of Oh, yeah, it's part of coaching. Years. I'm it not, is. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's and, part of coaching. Absolutely. And, it, and you know what? It's part of head coaching, quite frankly. And yeah. It's just it. it's kind of the, the bane of the existence of a head coach. You, you don't. You can't be everybody's friend. You can't. You, you can't cannot, be. You, you know. cannot be everybody's You're not, friend. And, and sometimes that bothers you because you 
you see the relationships that the assistants have, yeah. but it's yeah. just like if you're running a successful organization, yep. you somebody has to be the guy so true. at the top. And then like I always have the I kind of have the talk with some of the assistants over the years is like, look, I know you have this close relationship with this guy or whatever, but to me, I, I'm your voice I, matters. I, the I most. recruited all of these guys. I didn't just recruit three yeah. of them or five of them. I all of them. And so I have to be, I'm, they're all my like kids in a family. And so I'm not going to favor this guy over that guy or whatever, you know, like, Mm -hmm. I I know, I know you really believe in this guy, but this guy's playing better than this guy and he's worked harder and, or as hard. So it's time to play him. I mean, we've had, and those aren't, you know, those are, that's just the, the, but Hey, you know what? You get paid a lot of money and get a lot of attention and and all that. And, and Mm -hmm. that, that's the other side of it. But it is, you miss out on, you know, like the, well, the hey, friendship maybe the, yeah. the assistants have. But I, I I mean, I hope, like my hope, and maybe it's the rationalization, is that the relationship changes after you're done and then it becomes I'm just going to say that. I, th- that. I, th- I, think, I think from afar, obviously uh, closer than afar, but covering the games and then just watching you, I think you've gotten a little bit more opened in, within yourself to the players yeah. as you've grown older, yep. and I think it's helped – I think it's helped the program and it's helped recruiting. I think guys feel more comfortable around you. And when I say that, people want to take it as a negative before, but you were just a little bit more rigid on certain things. Obviously, it was a successful way to do it. And we touched on it earlier. You added the mental health stuff. And I'm again, I'm not saying it was, you know, it wasn't in ISO practice where we were getting screamed at. Yeah. You're, that's never been your style. And I've told people that. Yeah. You're going to get coached, but you're never going to get – you can be demanding without being demeaning. That's how exactly how you coach. And so I think seeing from afar, it's been kind of cool to see you kind of like loosen up a little bit with some of these guys um, because like we never did that. You would have never let us do the handshake stuff. Yeah. You would have never let us wear yeah. our own shoes. You know what I'm saying? Like now you let, you kind of understand, like let the guys have a little yeah. bit more fun and that stuff matters to this generation. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think that's a, that's a really good attribute, uh, you know, obviously, you don't like uh, praise, but that's something you should be proud of because you changed how you approach younger men. I guess if that makes sense. I, I just think you have to change if you're yeah. not like. And if you you mentioned Coach Bayheim and Coach K and and all and even uh, Tom and some of these guys, you, mm-hmm. if you're not willing to adapt and change, I mean, then you're yeah, adapt or die. It. Yeah, yeah, and that's I think holds true in everything and any. Uh, Aspect well, of but, life, but, but but the point is that you were successful without doing that. So that, that, that to change is harder to do. Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah. And so I think you know it's been it's been fascinating to watch from the, from afar because you know I, I chuckle a little bit because I'm like he would have never let us start. Creating and and, you know and look, I mean? like, Mo, some of that. Well, I mean that's so 2005. So I mean what, that was probably what my six year or something. I mean so look, some of that's born out of it. you're still insecure maybe you know yeah. as a young coach and all that i mean that's you, certainly okay when you first took the job real quick do you think you were fully prepared when, uh, when you took nobody's it from- prepared for and if anybody thinks tommy's prepared i mean nobody's yeah. prepared for that it's a it's a totally different go on the fly uh, a little bit i mean well, you I have mean, your hey, toolbox and then you kind of right yeah hey the best thing and 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 this has been my philosophy since i took over is is uh uh Fitz and then Munns, I mean, delegated a lot of responsibility mm-hmm. to assistants. And I've been the the biggest believer of that and ran our program like that. I feel if you delegate a lot of responsibility to the assistants, then they feel ownership. Yeah. And so they are a thousand percent in and the loyalty and they suffer wow. every bit as bad as the head coach does on those losses, like the one you just referred to. Mm-hmm. And we're all hurt instead of like, well, I would have done this different. I would have done that different, but I can't do this. Well, it was their scout, you know, yeah. or it was, you know, or this and that. So we're all in this uh, uh, together. So I think that having done, had that as an assistant, and then one of the things that saved me is, well, it saved me, but it put a tremendous amount of pressure on me that first year was we were coming off an elite eight. Elite eight, yeah. I mean, it's different in Elite Eight now. Like, hadn't been done yeah, in the no, history it was of wild. mankind. Yeah. <laughs> and, okay. And 
Then you got these guys back. Yeah, you. The, the, we had guys back, but the tricky thing was we also lost Quentin Hall and yeah, and, uh, and, the, and Jeremy Eaton and some other. You know, there, we lost some guys, uh -huh. and um, so expectations were off the charts, which we never had at Gonzaga. We never had no. expectations, um, and so uh, yeah, I mean, you're you're apprehensive, scared, excited, um, you know, motivated and, and probably a little bit, you know, here's how we have to do things now. Yeah. And I can't be buddies with the players now and all wow. that, you know? So the, then you, as you get farther along in this, you just get way more comfortable in your own shoes and believe yeah. even more in what you were doing. But, uh, so, um, a couple more things and we'll get you out of here. I appreciate the time. Really do. This is probably, this is the longest podcast I've ever done. So I just, let's just set the record straight just so if there's I'm any your guy of course you're so you are, you kind of so are the golden it. child i mean i don't remember <laughs> allowing blake to not play defense or you scream and yell at the walk on so it's it's Did actions blake, speak louder than blake words never played defense let's just get that true all the old zag fans will totally agree with me i played with the guy he had as good a defensive prowess as i did terrible so let's just this is But he would rebound. He was a fero he was a good rebound for a guard. Blake's a great player. Yeah, he yeah, got yeah. drafted. No, but, but I mean, you know what I mean? He'd give you kind of that effort on the, <laughs> at least. Uh, well then I'm gonna use your point. It's hard to score twenty eight a night. Right? Amen. So then there you go. So that's, then you that's know, like my, when the shot goes up, I'm running downhill on the offensive end. It's a little more uphill, the the court's exactly. tilted. And think about all the head coaches you've had over the course of your career. Yeah, Who appreciated that more than anybody? True, but the point. guy, the old ball coach, the old. just <laughs> let you uh, flourish and just didn't really focus on the things that you weren't doing. Um, all right, let's let's touch a little bit. And you don't have to get too deep into it because we all know. What about Tommy leaving? Like it, it, it's, I think it's overdue for him to get an opportunity. But uh, he's obviously one of my friends. Yeah. yeah. He, good friends has helped me out a lot and obviously your guys relationships. So do you want to just touch on that a little bit? Oh, listen, what a awesome, awesome opportunity. Yeah. I mean, at, at the end of the day, that's the only thing that matters. Right. Mm -hmm. You know? And so, it's true. um, totally, uh, excited, uh, for that and, and happy that, uh, you know, he was, now going to get that uh, opportunity. I mean, uh, we had it wired for him at, at GU, and and uh, um, but uh, it there it's tough. It's really tough in that you know our wives are best friends. So I see Marcy, you know, suffering, and yeah. and uh, uh, our daughters are best friends. Uh, so it it's reminds me so much of when Leon. Left. Yeah, I that's mean. True. You, you know, you lose your right hand guy and you're confident and, and you you know, that you don't even have to explain what you're doing in practice. They just kind of jump in and, and, and do all that. Um, uh, so it's tough, but it's, I mean, uh, it, it, the toughness part isn't even close to the excitement and the uh, um, just how uh, happy you are for him given the opportunity. I mean, that, that outweighs yeah. everything. Yeah. And uh, it's more just, you know, watching families get through that. And then, listen, I, I would just say this. Like, people are going to have vastly uh, uh, undervalued, underestimated the effect that Brian Michelson has had on this program. And, and that primarily is what, going back to what we referred to earlier, I, I am a huge believer in putting my assistants out in mm -hmm. front of the world and – and collectively, I'm, I'm a big believer in using collective wisdom and not just thinking that I know everything. Um, and so I think that's one of our strengths at GU, and I try to use everybody in the In, in the, the huddle, whole, yeah, yeah. As you should. I've played for a coach that didn't in Charlotte. It was uh, – oh, I was, but the year I was hurt was Sam Vincent, and he literally made the coaches – during a timeout, if an assistant coach wanted to say something, they had to write it down on an index card and hand it to him. Yeah. It was wild. Anyway, it's just so yeah, it was wild. Um, the, and even to the point, I really like to put them out in the media. So the media knows who they are yeah. and they do interviews. Many coaches don't let any of their, uh, many head coaches don't let any of their coaches talk to the media. I think it's important that the media sees how hard these guys are working and the, and the, the, uh, 
the impact that they have on the program. But, you know, I mean, I think everybody's focus was on Tommy. And I mm-hmm. think, in, you know, in the last four years, Brian's really found his stride and, and yeah. is something. And now, now it'll be time. I, I, I love Roger and Roger is going to be, I think now is going to show some real growth uh, there and be able to, uh, uh, people will get to uh, become more educated about that. But I'm, I'm kind of fired up for everybody outside the program because everybody inside the program knows yes be mike yeah he's <laughs> and uh um so now it'll be good for kind of everybody to get up to speed outside of the program well yeah be mike obviously he played in in my teams uh until 2005 he was roni's class and B mike helped us all out when we were when he was teammates right and he was always the guy that would call me down i'd get subbed out and be like hey you need to try to do this and then that's a hard role to do when you're he was a, wasn't he Oregon State player of the year mm-hmm. and you know you're a walk-on and you don't even sniff the court yeah. and you still bought into the team aspect but he's so cerebral about the game and I I know understand that but you're exactly right I think he's gonna have an opportunity to grow but he's light years compared to his ex, quote-unquote experience basketball wise as a coach than uh, than not if that makes sense so like it's gonna be cool to see his growth as well but but I, and I would just say uh, this is just like I mean even going back to the 2017 uh, uh, team I mean his impact on our recruiting has been yeah off the charts and and his ability to to build relationships uh, with these players and where I mean these are these are guys where he went into you know territory that we don't usually get players from Mm -hmm. and pulled them out and in like mo these were like highly uh competitive recruiting battles you know we've been had those well you just got chad i mean yeah yeah and 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 brian is very close with jalen too and Mm -hmm. and to go into texas and get drew timmy yeah uh i mean back when he was first getting going i mean he went into memphis and I mean, got Jonathan Williams. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's 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 amazing the uh, uh, you know what he's been able to do. And it, and and you know, I hesitate to say he because we all kind of collectively work on the recruiting. But he he's been masterful at building relationships. He's tight with all the all the players. And I, hey, it, it's it, it's exciting for me to see him finally. He'll begin to get his due, and uh, you know, we'll be working our way into, you know, putting him in position to be the next guy here eventually, I think would be the plan. Um, mm-hmm. And he should be. He's he, He's got ownership in this thing, just yeah. like Tommy did. Yeah. No, but I, Tommy's going to be great at Arizona. You know that. I know that. I, he's going to be I, I've, I've said he's going to be missed. That's personally, for sure. professionally, yeah, but uh, across the board. But, I mean. I've said it to that's people. That's just really. selfish. The, uh, the the far outweighing thing is just how mm. jacked you are for him getting his chance and well and, and a little nugget with that too is like he's gonna be close to Liam too then you can watch him play right yeah the Grand yeah. Canyon so that's that's a cool little tidbit for him as well mm-hmm. personally yeah. and for his mom and his his, his sisters right uh, yeah. Liam's sisters you know so um, but he's you know it, it's it, uh, when the news broke and I kind of heard it in the in the in the periphery in the background that it was gonna happen it was. Excited and a little bit sad too, though, because he's yeah our guy, you know. But yeah, uh, absolutely, it's it's cool when you see your friends get uplifted and get an opportunity. Um, and you're happy yeah. for him, you know. Yeah. So and this uh, this is our fourth uh, fourth one to go. Fourth right? one we've yeah, that sent out, and they've all it's that they you know they've all been there's been a personal aspect to it, and mm-hmm. then uh, you know the professional aspect to it. So, but it's 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 all good it's yeah good. well i th- appreciate you touching on that uh well, this has been good coach i appreciate it uh you know you shared some stuff that uh, a lot of people don't know about um you know and i, I always i kind of wrap up the, the the deals with especially the uh, gonzaga guys on you know just kind of personal stories and stuff i i just always wanted uh say it publicly and i said it on my jersey thing it's so true I really appreciate the friendship that has grown after we've played. I really have. Cause like 
you told me 15 years ago that I could like go out and have a beer with you, mm. I'd have been like, uh, make some shit up. I ain't going. <laughs> I'm just being real. You no, know? I know. And, and I think like what we talked about earlier, like knowing that as a head coach, like the, the best part of me is see, is being able to interact with you guys after, you know, mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. if, on a personal level. Now, obviously I, the professional part of it is awesome. The, the challenge of, you know, figuring out the right way to play and figuring out, you know, and motivation. Watch them grow as players and young players men. Players, and, yeah. and, but also, this, you know, the one thing I think we've nailed up here, the connectivity of the team and the team plays together. And Absolutely. There's no, no better example than this year's team. But, at the you know, in the back of your head, you're still like, well, you know, guys going to be, you know, now that, you're right. We do. We can hang out. We can say anything to each other. Yeah. We have these great discussions or whatever, and it's a friendship. And and you know, you look forward to that with Corey, Joel, and mm-hmm. and Jalen, and and all these guys. And and uh, um, it's kind yeah, of the best. That, it's kind of the best. The best part of it, or at least it's. It, I don't know if it's the best part. It's a cherry on top of of the whole yeah. experience, kind of. So I was afraid to talk to you when I was playing, or I didn't want to. Like, I'm yeah. not afraid, but. You know what I'm saying? So I like, think it's probably more you didn't want to. I didn't want yeah, to. Yeah. You know what I mean? It was kind of. I was the guy that you know I, I'd knock down a jumper when you'd say like swing it, and then I'd you know stare down your own bench. That was one of my favorite things yeah. to do. You know, yeah. like you can't take me out anyway, so it's all right. Yeah. You um, and Perk kind of shared those moments, and again. <laughs> there's that the old ball coach was big enough to overlook those many in the profession would have just jerked those guys right out of games but i just say hey, uh, whatever it, if he it, wants to take it out on me god bless uh, him. again i appreciate you coming on and, and it's been a it's been a blessing in my life to be um you know known you as a as a coach and as a man you've helped me out you've always had my back behind the scenes all the time you've always been gracious with allowing me access to you know the program and stuff like that so i really appreciate it and uh it's been fun to see your growth, man. It's been awesome it. to see this next phase. It's not easy figuring out what to do. When yeah, that's true. The lights kind of go true. off, yep. and it's scary, and it's weird, and mm-hmm. especially when you're, you're, you know, we're such a, a well. You guys, bolt. you guys, it started for me is is you and Tommy going to bat for me to go back to school mm-hmm. and, and be a grad assistant. It really did. It, it helped me get around the game again, get around people that I knew loved me for who I was. And kind of shed the, the the stuff of whatever, if you get what I'm saying. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. And you guys kind of helped start that healing process of, okay, getting a little more comfortable in my own skin, you know. So I've always appreciated you guys recognizing that, letting me come in, you know, be a grad assistant. I knew I wasn't cut out for coaching after that. I wasn't. My dad told me that before I started. Mm-hmm. God bless him. But he's just like, you could do the workout stuff, but you're just not, you're not cut out for this in a nice way. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, but it helped me heal. You know what I mean? As far as a basketball player and somebody that accepted basketball back into my life, yeah. if that makes sense. I know it yeah. sounds funny, but no. you know, so I, again, coach, I appreciate you coming on. This has been Absolutely. fantastic. Yep. I didn't get you, you know, I didn't do any got you moments. So just, well, you yeah. should be thankful because I, I had him teed up. I was ready. You know, I was sitting there was like, man, I can get this. I, I appreciate that. Yeah, of That's course. Just looking at it. Yeah, always looking out for you. All right, I appreciate it. Thanks. The Perimeter with Adam Morrison is brought to you in partnership with Speak Studios and Mercedes of Spokane.